Hello and welcome to Dave's Model Workshop. Today I'm going to show you how to work with resin figures, how to prepare them ready for painting. So I have here a recent purchase. It's a Soviet World War II uh, officer and he is uh, 135th scale. Um, as you can see there are some imperfections and there are some things we'll need to do before it's ready to go. So we've got this big molded base that's at the bottom of his great coat and beneath his feet. Obviously we need to remove that. We've got a little tiny imperfection just here which we'll need to have some putty or something similar put in. And on the head we've also got the, the molding base there. So there's quite a bit of clean up of flash and stuff like that that's required for this. Um, there's also a little tiny imperfection at the bottom of the coat there. So yeah, there's a bit of, bit of clean up involved. I guess the most important thing is resin figures always have a sort of slightly oily residue on them just from the casting process. So when you receive your resin figures the most important thing is to um, wash them first in warm soapy water and then let them dry. Otherwise you'll really have problems with getting your paint to adhere. So yeah, let's see how we go. So the first thing will be removing the bottom from these figures. So the tools that you'll need are some scissors, a scalpel and some kind of uh, file, um, emery board, something like that. It's pretty standard, you know, it's similar to your normal plastic model kit figure from here on, but yeah, there just are some extra challenges involved with resin. So really the biggest challenge tends to be the massiveness of these connecting points. Um, it can be a real nightmare to try and cut through. So generally you do have to get at them with a pair of scissors. Uh, there's nothing like a beautiful little model kit where you just trim it off a sprue. Okay, this one's coming off much easier than I expected actually. It's good. And trim it from the bottom of the great coat. And there we go. So as you can see, there is a lot of cleanup involved still. There's going to be a lot of scalpel work to get that trimmed down. The bottom of his coat's a bit funky. Um, so that's, I guess, yeah, resin. One of the beauties is you get so much more detail. I mean, look at that detail on the back of his great coat. Just beautiful. But the downside is that the casting process is a bit dirtier. Um, the next thing is, as we were just talking about, is just cleaning up with a nice sharp scalpel. Cutting through there, getting all that flash off. And then obviously we'll have to trim the bottoms of these shoes as well. So I'm going to get stuck in with my scalpel and report back in just a moment. Hello! Okay. Um, busy modeling with my daughter today. Um, so here's the figure now that it's all cleaned up. Just get some light on that. Hello. Hello. So here's the figure cleaned up. So as you can see, legs, they're all fine now. Um, I haven't bothered too much with the underneath of the great coat. You know, it's still a bit messy and funky under there, but really, once the figure's in place, no one's ever going to see that. I've left the head on its plinth just because it's going to make life much, much easier for painting that face. So I'll trim that off at the end before I adhere them. Um, to, to glue resin together, you can't use your standard plastic glue. I recommend this Instacure by Bob Smith Industries. So it's cyanoacrylate glue. Try and get that in focus. My goodness. Yeah, this stuff works a treat. Um, so the next thing I'm going to be doing is filling in those little tiny holes and I'll be using Humbrol model filler so it's like, basically like... Do I need any on mine? I think your one's probably okay. I want some on mine. Okay, we can put some on yours. Okay. So you just get like the little tiniest globule on the end of a toothpick for this kind of work. Um, make sure you recap it tightly because the air will make it set. And it's just a matter of putting it into wherever those little holes are that need filling. And smoothing it off as much as you can. Remember I have a little hole. Have my little hole. Yeah, you might have some little holes in your one too. Let's have a look and see once I've done this. <laughs> In a second. I can see you on my arm. I will do I will put one in my arm. 
Um, I recommend try and get this as good as you can while it's wet because once it dries it's a bit of a nightmare to sand. Um, also if it starts to set for you you can always just lick your finger and that'll moisten it up just a tiny bit more. So that one's fine. This little seam here, let's see what we can do there. We can do that colour on yours, sure. It's blue and this colour. So this one's in a trickier spot, but <coughs> the beauty is where it is. I can make this into mud on his greatcoat if I need to. So I think we're getting away with that. So there's that one filled, and there's that one filled. Ashley wants that for the top peak of its head. Mm-hmm. Sure. And for the bottom and the um this blue and the other and the mustard colour. Okay, sure. What is that colour called? So there we go. Sorry, that was mostly my finger that you saw there. Um so yeah, look, I'll let that dry and then give it a little tiny sand back and that one is fine. Now can so, you talk? Easy as. So a quick note on why would you bother with resin vigors because they are so much more expensive than the standard plastic soldiers that you would buy. So this is an example of a resin figure on the right and the standard figure that came with the kit on the left. So the standard figure, it's a 1970s moulding, I get that, but just you know, look at the facial expression difference, look at the detail difference on those tanker helmets. It's just so much more detail, so much crisper in the resin, and that's, you know, that's why people produce the resin kits, you get so much more detail. Um, and also, I guess, you know, the beauty is that you can pick up figures that are much more animated or much more tailored to what you're actually wanting to achieve with your diorama. Um, yeah, but just looking at those faces, really, it's no contest. And that's why. So here's an example of another resin figure that's going to need a bit more work than the previous one. So, clean up, we're pretty good. He's got a little bit of a moulding cast thing down the bottom there. But otherwise, his actual figure is pretty good. Maybe a little bit on the collar just there. Um, you can see at the back here, his, the back flap of his tanker's helmet. There's a couple of holes in there, so it actually was so finely done that it didn't just right. Just get a paintbrush right here. You're missing a bit of a hole in his flap of his helmet. Um, the other issue with this guy is going to be arms. So where his arms connect to his body, it's a really poor fit. It's going to require a fair bit of putty to make those work. Here's the other arm and yeah you can see where it's just it's going to be a poor fit so there will be a fair bit of work involved in that and again that's where the model filler is going to come to the rescue. The other thing I'm going to have to do with this guy is so he was built to go into just a little turret hole but I've got quite a large turret hole here to put him into. Let's see if we can get some focus. Okay that's better. So quite a large turret hole, you're going to see that he's missing his legs there. So I'm going to have to cannibalise some legs from another figure. Cut off the bottom there, use that bottom of his, bottom hem of his coat as my cut off area. And just bodge some legs in there so that he can actually stand. And you can see that he has legs. So yeah, a little bit more work involved on this guy. But you get an idea for some of the challenges that are involved in uh, producing these figures and making them work. And this is that same figure once I've had a bit of a go at it. So, put some legs on from another old kit. Uh, changed one hand because I wanted this hand to be gripping a spanner. Um, done a fair bit of putty work around the shoulders. Let's try and get that in focus. Fair bit of putty work around the shoulders. Still need to tweak that and tidy it up a little tiny bit. Fair bit of buddy work around where the legs join the torso. And again, that looks bodgy as hell. But once it's all completely dry, we'll um, have to make him a bit of a bum there. Once it's all dry, then I will just 
tweak it away, shave off the bits that are horrible, and really painting is going to cover up the worst of those sins. So yeah, quite a difference, and it gives you an idea of some of the challenges. Usually, resin, bang, perfect, but with this one, needed a little bit of work to go into the big, big hole. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, do please ask any questions you have in the comments or any feedback, anything like that. And um, yeah, otherwise visit my blog. It's davesmodelworkshop.com. See you guys.